What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing week four predictions for the 2017 through 2018 NFL season. The season's already one third through, two thirds to go. It sucks. You know, the, the football season is the shortest, the shortest sports season of all sports. And uh, yeah, it, it sucks, but we still have a lot of great football to get into. So let's get into week four. But before that, last week, I went 8-8. Eight and eight. That's the first time I went 8-8 eight and eight, um, in a long time. First time I was exactly 500 in a long time. I know I said I never went negative before in previous videos, but looking back at it, I think I went neg I think I went below 500 at least once or twice, but they were all 7 and 9. But it's still unaccept uh, unacceptable. I do not want to get under 500 this year. I want to get better at predicting these games. So 8-8, uh, eight and eight, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the worst week that I have in this season. So that's out of the way. Now it's time to move on to 12 wins consistently. So last week I went 8-8, eight and eight, as you guys know. That brings me to a 30-17 and 17 record. That is a 63% accuracy right now. I'm, I was at 70 last week, 22 and 9, and I dropped all the way down seven, a whole 7%. That sucks. But uh, then against the spread, I had a bad week, 6 and 10. That brings me to a 22 and 25 record, which is understandable. I'm not the best against the spread, but that this week really screwed me up. I'm usually just about at 500, if not a little bit more. So. Uh, yeah, and my sports fan entertainment rank is 69th. I would drop down one position But like I said the guy in first place is like 35 or 34 wins So I'm a good five or four wins away from first place So any given week I can climb right back up the ranks and I hope to do that This week and it's gonna be a tough one this week. This is this is another tough week here A lot of games can go both ways and I hope I didn't choose the wrong way so Thursday night football, we got the Bears at the Packers, the longtime rivalry, the the most, uh, the biggest rivalry in football right now. The most games played between these two is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the most games played between these two in NFL history, and it continues on Thursday night. The Bears at the Packers, and in this rivalry, the Bears actually have been competitive in this one, no matter how bad their team is. I think for the last two years, they split with the Packers, but um, I think in Lambeau Field here, I think the Packers have to come out with this win. I would be very shocked if they didn't. I know they're division rivals and stuff like that, but you know the Packers just beat Cincinnati at home with Cincinnati playing very well. I mean, Andy Dalton was on the mark. He only had six in incompletions. He had a very good day. AJ Green had over 100 yards, 10 receptions, something like that. Joe Mixon, the rookie, had a great day. Gio Bernard had a great day. Uh, a lot, you know, uh, that Cincinnati team played off the charts. William Jackson had a pick six, and it still wasn't enough firepower to beat the Packers at home. So I'm going to take the Packers at home. Um, I I know the Packers aren't the best as they ever been as they ever been at home. But they'll still get the win here against the Bears. Um, I just think the Bears don't have enough firepower. All they have is Tariq Cohen and Jordan Howard. Don't get me wrong. They single-handedly uh, beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I just think you know the Green Bay Packers are a better team right now at this point. Especially playing at home. It's hard to play at Lambeau. So I'll take the Packers. 31-17. Take Green Bay. Minus 7. Saints at the Dolphins. I know the Saints had an impressive win against the Carolina Panthers, beating them 34-13. It was a division game, and sometimes the Saints puts down a beat down on Carolina, no matter how good these teams are. But um, I'm still going to have the Saints winning, but this could go the other way because Jay Ajayi was shut down by the Jets' defense. And, you know, you guys know about the Saints' defense. It's hard to... Uh, you know stop anybody with that defense. So if Jay Ajayi gets going this game could go the other way But I have the Saints pulling out this win 26 to 21 take New Orleans minus three the Bills at the Falcons The Bills just come just came off an impressive win against the Denver Broncos beating them 26 to 16 and it was very impressive and it was it a fluke I don't know did Denver show up. I don't know I mean, Denver still had a good day as far as the receivers and the running backs went and stuff like that. They still ran. 
Um, but I just, I, I thought the Bills caught him slipping. But um, I still like the Bills. I think their defense is legit. They proved that to me in Denver. I was very skeptical in the Carolina game because Carolina's uh, offense struggles as it is. But I, I'm here to say that the Bills' defense is legit. They got, Ronald, they got rid of Ronald Darby, and they're still doing fine. So uh, Tredavis White right, uh, right now is balling out. And, and EJ Gaines, who was traded to the Bills from the Rams in, uh, in order to get Sammy Watkins. So um, right now I like the Bills, but I'm going to choose the Falcons in a close game, 20-14. to 14. Give me Buffalo to cover the spread, plus 8.5. I think eight and a half is a little too much of a big spread. I know Atlanta's offense is pretty good, but they've been getting in some tight games lately. So um, I'm going to take the Bills uh, to cover the spread. The set, the Steelers at the Ravens. Both these teams got completely embarrassed. One getting embarrassed by the Jacksonville Jaguars, the other by the Chicago Bears. Two teams who could possibly have the first and second overall pick this year, but. Um, well, I mean, Jacksonville is better than that, but still. Um, anyway, Steelers and the Ravens, both these teams were embarrassed, but I'm going to take the Steelers here in a close game. I, I don't, I'm not going to give up on the Ravens just yet. I, th I just think they're playing out, you know, lose this game. But um, they can still pull this one off. It's at home, and when it comes to these AFC North uh, rivalries, sometimes the home advantage is the only advantage. So that could be one reason. It's just that I don't think Joe Flacco and, and that offense will get it done uh, with the Steel, uh, as opposed to the Steelers' offense at this point. I think both of them are coming, uh, coming in angry, and the Steelers are going to come out on top in a close game, 16-14. to 14, Take Baltimore to cover the spread. And I did this because if, if the Baltimore Ravens win, I at least get the spread right. So um, I'll take the Baltimore Ravens to win in a close game, take them plus three, and I'll have the Steelers winning 16 to 14. The Bengals at the Browns, another AFC North matchup. And the Browns, ah, man, I thought they would get the win against Indianapolis. I was stupid for thinking that because Indianapolis was was winless at that point, and you know they were more hungry for the win. It was obvious. But uh, you know the Bengals, their offense actually looked better, like I predicted. I told you guys the offense would look better. Because when they hire in-house with these offensive coordinators or defense coordinators, whoever it is, um, that that side of the ball always gets better. And it did definitely with the, with the Bengals. They scored 24 points. I had them scoring 24 points against the Browns as well. Take the Bengals 24 to 16. Take Cincinnati minus three. The Rams at the Cowboys. Now the Rams could pull this one off. I like their offense. Their offense is legit to me. I know, you know, they faced Indianapolis and they got like 49 points on them. They faced uh, San Francisco. They got 41 points on them. They lost to the to the Redskins, 27 to 20. But the Redskins are looking pretty good right now. They just beat an, a juggernaut team in o the Oakland Raiders. So maybe the Rams are the real deal right now. I don't know. And can they compete in the uh, the NFC West? We'll have to find out, and this game is definitely a good game to watch if you guys uh, you know, are trying to see if the Rams are legit or not. This is definitely a great opponent for the Rams to test themselves. So, um, But I'm still going to have the Cowboys winning it. I'm going to be safe with this pick. You know, uh, Nothing really tells me right now that the Rams are flat out going to win this game, but they do have a chance. I'm going to take the Cowboys 26-20, to take Los Angeles Rams with the points, plus 8. The Titans at the Texans. This is another game. Here's another game that, that can go both ways. The Texans and the Titans. The Texans just come off, just came off a very heartbreaking loss in which they almost pulled it off beating the New England Patriots at Gillette Stadium. This could have been a completely... This would have like at least had the Texans in the conversation for a playoff run. So, um, And that would have been the first time that Bill Belichick... And Tom Brady have lost to a rookie quarterback. That would have been the first time. But if it wasn't for Brandon Cooks getting that touchdown in the last seconds of the game, uh, that would have happened. But uh, unfortunately, unfortunately not. And they could get the win here against the Titans, but I think the Titans just look too good right now. I mean, you look at the Texans' defense. They played terrible against New England. I mean, wide open receivers the whole game 
wide open receivers, even when they were in the red zone, deep plays down the field, whatever it was, they were always open. And the Titans, the Titans have a great offense. I mean, they may be the best offense in the league or top five at least. They are definitely top five. And I don't know how the Texans are going to have to find a game plan for them. But I think it will be closer than a lot of people think because it is a division game. I'm going to take the Titans to win here. 27 to 24, take Tennessee minus two. The Lions at the Vikings. This is a pick em game and with good reason. I don't know who to pick at this point, but I have to go with the Lions. I think they're very angry coming off that, that loss from uh, Atlanta. They could have pulled that one off. Um, they should have pulled that one off. That, that call should have definitely stood on the field. The ruling is called touchdown. And I didn't see too much for them to reverse it, but they did. But, uh, yeah, and the Vikings are coming off a great win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Case Keenum threw for over 350 yards. Uh, um, Stephon Diggs had 170-something yards. Adam Thielen, 98 yards. I mean, they were just clicking on all cylinders for this um, Vikings offense. But they were bullying a very beat-up and very depleted Tampa Bay defense who are very uh, hurt right now. On top of that, their secondary was never good to begin with. So obviously the Vikings were going to take advantage. I don't think anybody thought they would score as much as they, as much as they did and Case Keenan would, would have as much yards as he did. But I still think it was a product of them beating up on a weak defense. So I'm going to take the Lions to win this one in a close game, 18 to 15, and then the Pickham game take the Lions. The Panthers at the Patriots. The Panthers' offense is really struggling right now. Kelvin Benjamin may not play this game. Uh, and then you got Christian McCaffrey, who's not really living up to his potential right now as far as being that you know power running back they needed. He is getting some plays as a receiver, but that's not his position. He's a running back. Uh, so I, I just think the Carolina offense is all mangled up, mostly due to, to Cam Newton, too. He's just lobbing the ball anywhere. He's not being very accurate lately and throwing interceptions. So um, I think the Patriots will take advantage of that, and they'll win this game pretty easily, 31-10. to 10. I know Deshaun Watson threw all over them, and I know they almost won this game with like 30-something points, 33 points. But I just think that the Carolinas offense is really going to struggle. 31 to 10 is what I predict. Take New England minus eight and a half. The Jaguars at the Jets. The Jets could pull this one off. They're playing at home. They come. They came off a strong win against the Miami Dolphins. Uh, it would have been 20 to zero um, in this game, but um, they scored a touchdown late in the game, and then they they couldn't even get the extra point. So. Um, they would have been 20 to zero. They would have skunked the Miami Dolphins, who have a pretty decent offense. Uh, but I, I think the Jaguars are going to come off with this win. They have a lot of firepower on that defense, a lot of firepower on that offense. I'm telling you, the on, on paper, the Jacksonville Jaguars have a really good team on paper, but uh, they just can't find a way to get it done. But I think Blake Bortles would do just fine in this game. Uh, you're not playing a very superior defense, not one that's really going to make plays on the ball. So you still have to be careful with the ball, but just not as much against this uh, Jets defense. So I think the Jaguars would come off with this win, 23-16. to Take Jacksonville, minus 3.5. The 49ers and the Cardinals. The 49ers could win this game. you got to like the 49ers. Um, they're playing some really close competitive division games. I mean, we'll see what happens. They played C uh, Seattle very close, uh, a total of three points between those two teams, and then a total of two points between the Rams and the 49ers in that matchup. So I think this will be another product of that. I think the San Francisco 49ers will just barely you know, lose this game. They could be very close to winning this game, but I think they barely lose it by a couple points. I had the Cardinals winning this game 20 to 17. Take San Francisco with the points plus seven. I think seven points for the Cardinals is way too much right now. Their offense is not looking good. Um, so you gotta take San Francisco with the plus seven. The Eagles at the Chargers. The Chargers could win this game. This is like all of these games could go both ways. And it's very like I wouldn't be shocked if every single one of these games 
you know, go out of my favor and I go 0 and 16 this uh, this this week. But um, the Chargers could win this game. They're hungry for a win. They got robbed the last two wins. They got handled against the Kansas City Chiefs. But they're looking for their first win here, and they're playing at home against the Eagles team who almost choked the game to the Giants, who scored 24 points in the fourth quarter. But I've got, I have to have the Eagles winning at this point. There's nothing that shows me that the Chargers are going to win this game. I can't have the Chargers winning just based on, oh, they're winless right now, and they want to win. You, they, you can't choose the Chargers because of that. And I think the Eagles will win this one, but pretty close. I had the Eagles winning 21-17, to take Philadelphia plus one. I don't understand how Los Angeles is, is favored in this game. It makes no sense to me. They've done nothing this season to prove that. Uh, so then we got the Raiders at the Broncos. Um, I've got Denver pulling this one off, believe it or not, just by three points. But I, I just think Denver looks good right now. Um, I know they came off a tough loss against the Buffalo Bills, and so did the Oakland Raiders, 27-10 to 10 to the Washington Redskins. But I think Denver just looks better right now. The, their offense looks ju just on point. Trevor Simeon is doing great. Uh, the Denver defense plays great, and you can't say the same about the Oakland defense. The Oakland offense is great, but the Oakland defense is not. So if you have... You know, one side has a great offense and a great defense. One side has a great offense and not so good defense. Who do you think is going to win that matchup? I'm going to take the one with, with balanced, that's balanced on both sides of the ball. I'm going to take the Oakland Raiders to pull this one off. Twenty, um, The Oakland Raiders, the Denver Broncos to pull this one off. 23-20, to 20, take Denver, minus 2.5. The Giants at the Buccaneers. I'm hoping to go to this game. I'm about to buy my ticket. They're very cheap right now, uh, so I'm about to buy my ticket. But uh, I actually think, call me confident, call me crazy, but I think we're going to win this game. We could take advantage of this weak Tampa Bay offense, I mean weak Tampa Bay defense, and an offense that have very good receivers, but their offensive line isn't all that well. Their running game isn't all that well. Jameis Winston, it could be a top five quarterback, but he holds himself back from throwing stupid passes. The Giants are hungry for an interception. We don't have an interception yet. And around week three and week four last year, we didn't have an interception. And we intercepted Aaron Rodgers twice. So I think we were hungry for an interception there. We're going to be hungry this game. And Jameis Winston is very sloppy with the ball. So I think we can get some turnovers. And I think we can actually run the ball. Gerald McCoy might not play this game. Levante David is out. Quan Alexander is out. So we can't expect too much, uh, expect too much blitzes coming from the linebackers. And I think maybe we could run the ball because of those linebackers not being there. They had to promote some guys from the practice squad onto the active roster on the linebacking core. So, and then this secondary for the Tampa Bay defense has never been good. Vernon Hargreaves continues to struggle. So I think we can. I think we'll have our way against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But I think we'll we'll win a very close game. We're gonna win this game 20 to 17. Take the Giants plus three to get their first win here. We can take. We can definitely take advantage of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think the offense is clicking again. Uh, we saw that last game. Uh, so the, I don't think the running game is going to do much better for the Giants. But I think passing the ball will have our way. So And then the Colts, Sunday Night Football. The Colts at the Seahawks. I think the Colts keep it close. The Seahawks are 26 in the league in, pa in um, scoring right now. So they're not scoring too many points. And Jacoby Brissett is doing just fine as the quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. He's only been four weeks in the system, and he's been doing great. So I think it'll be a close game than a lot of people think. I'm going to take Indianapolis with the points, plus 13. And I'm going to take the Seahawks to win, though, 27-17. to 17. I'll have them winning that game. But the Colts will compete, and I think the Seahawks will pull away as the game goes on. This Redskins at the Chiefs. The Redskins are no joke, guys. I don't know. The Redskins are no joke. I, I mean, the Giants are the laughing stock in the NFC East right now. Uh, but I'm going to take the Chiefs to win this game, but the Redskins can definitely pull this one off on the road. But it's hard to beat a team such as the uh, Kansas City Chiefs when they're playing at home. Arrowhead Stadium is one of the loudest places you'll ever be at, and it's going to be hard to win there. Monday Night Football, they're going to be looking to win under the lights. Kansas City Chiefs... Um, Looking to stay undefeated here. Will they stay undefeated? 
uh, we'll see to find out. Uh, they beat the Raiders, who were undefeated, and so they so they faced them. So um, we'll have the Chiefs winning this game, 26 to 24, a very close game. I'm going to take the Washington Redskins plus seven. Those are my picks, guys. This is a very long video, and I apologize for that. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.